All right, so more just introduction to this, this pen tool in Illustrator, the most basic tool. I'm going to go ahead and delete these ones that I've done Whoops. by using the large selection tool and then just getting rid of them, right? So I was showing you at the end of the last video with the pen tool, you can click, move, click, and then drag a curve, right? And you can see I kind of misjudged where I needed to click for that curve. But then you can click back on it and get it straight again. And I, I just recommend always clicking back on it so that you can really control your curves. S straight again. On it. Now here's the, the problem that becomes very apparent very quickly is I can't see my sketch anymore as it starts to automatically fill in my shape. So what can I do? I can make it empty. Yes. Exactly. So click. I'm trying to get as few anchor points as possible here. And then I'll adjust them after. So I plot, I click, I drag and stretch if I want it to be a curve, and then I click back on the anchor point to get back to a straight. Then I click and drag to make it a curve. And the whole idea of the pen tool is you should be able to match any two-dimensional shape this way. No matter how subtle. And sometimes I just want straights. There's not a lot of straights in my design, but there are some. And then you can always improve upon your design as well by giving it a little bit of subtlety and curve where maybe you didn't have it before. You know, like across the top of the head. The bottom of the ear. Now, what's kind of amazing about Illustrator is every time you do this with a different tool, you're going to make slightly different decisions. So I could draw this 10 times with the pen tool, and each time it would look just a little different. And so often, especially when you're working on something that's as specific as a logo, you really want to get used to it first and maybe try it a few times save each one before you decide on the, the finished approach. So again, I'll talk through what I'm doing. I click. I let it be straight. I'm not holding or dragging, otherwise I'd be a curve. I go to my next place and I click. And then if I want it to be a curve, I, I hold and drag. And then I click back on the anchor point to make the next half of the, the next vector is straight again to go to the next curve. And then I click and drag to make it into a curve. And then I click back on the anchor point so I can go back to a straight again. And then I'm going to overlap the path here. This is going to be a little crazy. We're going to see how this works later. Click and drag. I'm just trying to match my line. Then I click back on the anchor point. Click and drag. Then I click back on my anchor point, and then I want this to be a, well, no, I'll curve this a little bit, just like that. Click back on the anchor point, and click here and drag. All right, now I've got a closed path. But if I fill it, it's going to look crazy because I overlapped my path there, right? And so it's kind of twisting in space. So what do I do? I use my small selection tool. This gives me control of each anchor point. And I find the anchor point that I need to move. And it's going to be this one. And I grab it, and I move that back. But this is more than just needing to move it. I actually need to add an anchor point onto this line. And I can do that with the pen tool after the fact. If you use the pen tool, and then you hover over your existing path, it will add an anchor point for you. Right? It will even set the curve for you. 
That allows me now to use my small selection tool and then either use the corner tool for this, move this anchor, and get this to where I want it, right? This is that new anchor point I plotted that will help. Now, this is where we get to my favorite tool. Because I can go in and then I can click on each anchor point and I can massage it and I can round them out and average them when I need to with the cornering tool. I call it the cornering tool or the rounding tool. And this is all just with the basic pen tool. I've never left the pen tool and the small selection tool. It's just about how you can select that anchor clearly. All right. Okay, so continuing this, we've been using the, the pen tool and doing curves, right? And that made pretty short work of this. But then there might be things you want to adjust. So like if I wanted this curve instead of that straight, then I use my small selection tool. I click on it. I find the anchor point, And then I can curve it out with that tool. But I can also see that I might want to move the anchor point, or like I did on the tail, add an anchor point. So to add it, I go back to the pin tool, and then I click on the path, and it will add an anchor. Go back to the small selection tool, click on that anchor, and I can move it. And what's beautiful about that is it already creates the curves for me, right, that move between these. And then I can use the cornering tool. But you'll notice the cornering tool will always curve it on both sides of the anchor. So what if I want something like I was able to do with the pin tool where it's only curved on one side? Well, then I can control the handle, but then the handle affects both sides again. right? So if you hold down Command, nothing happens. If you hold down Shift, it will lock those handles into uh, 45 degrees or 90 degrees or zero degrees, which can be helpful for, for evening out curves. And then you can change the length of the individual handles because that will affect the curve as well. But what I want to do is I want to turn this into a curve like this instead of just a cornering tool. And for that, we need a new tool which is underneath the pen tool. It's called the anchor point tool. The shortcut for it is shift and C. So now I'm going to use the small selection tool, find my anchor point, and then I'm going to go to this anchor point tool. And I'm going to click on that anchor point. And what that allows me to do is turn it into curves where I have curves on both sides. And then if I click on the handle, I can adjust each side of the handle differently. And that might not seem like a big deal, but it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so I can have a curve that's convex going in to an anchor and then concave going out. And I can adjust all of these that way. I can also use this, turn, this anchor point tool to convert curves into straights, right? which can be helpful, or to just really move handles. So the way to adjust your curves at the end is often with this anchor point tool. If I want to really be able to control these, it won't move your anchor point. It will adjust the curves for it. And if you hold down command, or you use the anchor point tool, you can move each side of the curve individually. But when it comes to moving the anchor point, you got to use that small selection tool. So these are all just the top three tools in Illustrator. The large selection tool, the small selection tool, the anchor point tool, and the pin tool. Just going to thicken the tail out there a little bit. Maybe adjust this curve just a little bit, thicken it out.
And then this curve's a little wild. I'm gonna thin that out a little bit. There we go. And you're thinking of not just the positive shapes, but the negative shapes as well. So that looks pretty clean. Now, what is my cat missing from my sketch? It's missing the eye. So I'm going to make that eye as a new, I'm going to lock this. Layers are organizational. And I'm going to make the eye as a new shape. And I'm just going to use my favorite tool for that which I showed you in an earlier video to make the cat. This is the pencil tool. This is just where you can kind of freehand draw your vector. But just like the pen tool, you've got to close it at the end. You can double click on the pencil and you can set it to be more smooth or more accurate. I'm going to set it right there. And then I'm just going to click and draw while holding down. And then I got to end where I started. And there's my shape. I'm going to fill it with black just so you can see it. Use the small selection tool, click off of it. And you'll just see it's not as clean as if I do it with the pen tool because it's got a few extra anchor points. But then I can always adjust those anchor points. If I just use the pen tool and I click on an anchor point that already, already exists, it will delete it. So it's all about trying to do as much as you can with as few anchor points. So I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to turn it to white. And I'm turning it to white, not because I want a white shape in my logo, but just so I can see it on top of my black. Now I'm going to use the large selection tool, and I'm going to transform it and make sure it's placed just where I want it. So I think that's a pretty good placement. I'm not going to put a pupil in that eye because I want this to be readable from really far away. And now I have to do a new skill, which I've been showing a lot of you because you need it for your logo. But how do you punch a white shape out of a black shape? It looks like what I want, but I can't use this as my logo because it's not only black shapes. It's black and white shapes. So if I move it on gray or if I move it on red, you see that white is like an extra color that I don't want. To be maximally versatile, it needs to be able to be printed in one ink. So this is what I do. I select the overlapping paths. So I have this beautiful path. It took forever with the pen tool. I select that. And then I hold down shift and I also select the eye. So now you can see these are all lit up. These two very clear paths. I always try to do, make you do two paths at a time. So don't try to overlap more than two because then the tool gets really complicated. Now we're going to go to Window, and we're going to use this tool that should be in the Essentials, but it's not, and it's called Pathfinder. And I don't know why it's called Pathfinder. Maybe just because it helps you with paths. But I'm going to go ahead and put it right into my toolbar here, and I'm going to click on it, and Pathfinder does a few different things. It can merge overlapping paths into one path. It can subtract overlapping paths, from other paths, so it minus the, minuses the front from the back, right? It can exclude, which creates one shape where one is punched out of the other. So that's what I'm going to use. It's always going to take the properties of the one on top. And because I'm punching white out from black, it's going to punch that hole out where the eye is, but it's going to turn the whole thing white. And there we go. We can see that now we have a one shape logo but we want to change it from white to black. And we want to make sure there's no stroke on it, and there isn't. Okay, now I just need to add that other shape. So I'm going to put this back, and I'm going to use the pencil tool this time to do this shape. Though I think the pen tool might be, might be uh, better to make it clean. Well, let's try it with both. But this is actually a pretty difficult shape. So let me show you how I would do it with the pen tool. First, I plot a curve, and already that curve is off, so I was too ambitious. So let's start again. Okay, start here, go to here, stretch it out for the curve. Then click back on the anchor point, so I can start with a straight again. Go to here, 
do it with a 